Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM21. It's Stage Racer. This is episode 66. And I have re-signed now with Hoggins, Berman, Axion. Now, of course, that has been the objective of this playthrough all along. One team beginning to end. And this could be approaching the end. Because at this stage, I have presumably spent the entire budget with 188000 a month contract it's what you get you know you don't get an option to sign for less to say take 20k a month and be happy with that and allow your team to actually sign other writers no we are breaking the game potentially as i am the only writer signed for next season all of the other eight contracts are expiring and there was no new writers a year ago and presumably there will be no new writers for the 2025 season meaning i'm it and there's two revealing factors about this one we are listed as continental for next season reason being your team average your star rating is the combination of your top three writers it is the average of your top three writers so without three writers you have no star rating Therefore, you bump right on down to Continental. Presumably, with three writers, something could happen. So we'll keep an eye out and see if anybody gets signed. If there are three writers, we could still end up World Tour or Continental Pro, amazingly enough. But that is the minimum requirement to have a rating. We just don't have it. Uh, the other interesting point is that we actually do get a reveal here on what is our individual contribution to the web. The web being the team strengths. Uh, you can see time trial wise, oh, we definitely have a rating. And even though we're good at it, time trial is very much collective versus individualistic. The hills, same thing. I'm, I'm fairly good in the hills. I have a 77, but that by itself only gets you so far. It gets you further than time trial, so it's weighted a little more heavily, but not terribly heavily. I mean, it's three points below my time trial. Its average is comparative to my time trial when you add prologue to it. And yet, you know, hills wise, we're definitely classified a little bit higher. But maybe that's actually the case because it's it's only slightly. It's only slightly, and that's 77 and a half versus 77. And if you include acceleration, that's 76 and a half. Well, that makes it lower. <laughs> and the time trial is slightly below. So yeah, Hills is rated a little higher on an individual basis. But you see GC wise, that's where I'm rated most highly. The 84 mountain, of course, is a huge factor in that. The 82 recovery, I'm sure, is the other really big piece to that. So uh, those two ratings so high, you can see GC. One strong individual can make all the difference. But you can also see that it's still significantly lower than we were last year, despite, well, current year, despite how little support I have. I can definitely see with uh, Pedersen how big of a drop off we have in Hills. But with only one strong support climber, it drops us down, but not by much. We had virtually no t time trial support, and it's barely dropped us down. But I only contribute so much. And you can see with as low as my sprint and cobble ratings are, even though I have 76 acceleration, the overall 58 sprint, it's non-existent. Absolutely non-existent. So that does make a certain amount of sense. But there is my, well triangle really that uh, that I make up of the web following three sprint stages we join in the Tour de Polonia on stage four and we finish with four punchy stages and this might be our best chance this particular stage at getting a victory in the way that it's got quite a bit of climbing to do overall it's really nothing major, but 
when you put it all together, I think it's going to just about be something that uh, something that could get the job done. Also, the tempo has been pretty high throughout the day. Uh, Blikra is on a plus five, but he's really weak to begin with. Alves is super fatigued. This is the problem with only having nine total riders and riding the World Tour calendar. Uh, the rest of the team is absolutely dying at this point of the stage and desperate need of a break. So Alves is a strong puncher, and yet he is awful today. Uh, he still might end up being my best lead out guy, which is really sad, but uh, Powers, Blikra, that's going to be near the front. Delai is definitely going to be near the front, though he's got pretty decent uh, stamina. Camargo, there's your best lead out rider, so ahead of Alves. And then Pedersen, best puncher. Alright, so here's my bold plan, because... I have a plus two race day condition, and I'm a strong enough rider that I feel like the I can probably get through this thing and I can back off if necessary. What I would like to do here is get the whole team up here, so we need to back off initially. Back off quite a bit, actually, uh, allowing the rest of the team to get forward. But once they get here, I'd like to push my agenda. My agenda meaning making the climbing hard enough on everybody else to blow up the field bit by bit and at least eliminate a whole lot of contenders and give myself a chance to go clear on theoretically the final climb. Breakaway now done and I have just two teammates in place at the moment but you can see another group on the way. Delay struggling to get through. Let's see if we can help these guys guide them through a little bit but it's not a very wide road through here. The Jumbo Visma in particular very much eating up this side of the road here and we're not able to find a way through but here <laughs> was a gap as Bahrain Victorious immediately comes over and steals the spot away as they're making their own push to get up through the field. There we go. Now we're starting to get a couple more guys in place. And here are the last couple. And there's the Bahrain Victorious move that uh, seemed pretty obvious. Powers, you're a puncher anyway. Give me your punch. Now, I, I don't totally mind if somebody else is pushing right now. I mean, as long as somebody's pushing, right? Uh, Delay also is a puncher. So let's try to get him going. Powers is done. That's one rider. And we've got most of the team in place now, but I've been dropped. Well, we can see I got caught behind somebody, pace. clearly. It's going to be difficult to break away now. We're about to the top, though, so I'll easily get back up into position. And meanwhile, everybody else is there now. So we are taking over that position at the front. Delay, as we approach the top, is going to push 99 and cover the descent. That'll give everybody else a chance to reset. So that'll have essentially gotten me through two guys over the first climb. And that's good. Especially when you consider that even I am a little bit of fatigued. And there's a lot of We're riders that have gone off back. And there's a lot of riders that aren't going to get that? that much recovery with a quick descent. The I, there's on the other hand, will behind. be fairly well recovered. And that's why I figure this approach is going to be better than just waiting for the final climb to go for it. In fact, we are splitting some guys off. 53k to go. We're going to need water here at some point, it looks like. We've split another group off. 109 now. And we go to head up the climb here. There you go. Delay. He is now done. And we will get on to Blikra. Blikra, we're, we won't go full gas here, but we're going to push pretty hard. It's a short climb. It's only 4.5k. 
In fact, the climb itself is only classified as like 3k. Yeah, 2.9. So we're not even on the base of the climb yet. Now we are climbing. The riders are in a portion okay, of on to Alves. And now we're getting to something a little more resembling a hard push. And so here comes Bahrain Victorious trying to push again. Which again, that's totally fine with me if somebody else wants to push even harder. It's not about using my team up in that sense. It's about making it hard. And if somebody else is going to make it hard, as long as it's not so hard on me, that's okay. okay. 1k to go to the top. Alves is done. I need to take these three guys and put them all on auto. Okay, on to Pedersen. Camargo not looking so great. This is not ideal. I was hoping to have these guys through. Uh, at this point, I think we want to just maybe hang on. We want to get a little recovery out of these two, give them a chance to do something on the next climb, and set it up for the final climb. But having such a weak team is constantly leading towards issues like this. Okay, at the moment we're down to 73, and this is what I was kind of aiming for. I, meanwhile, am already in recovery mode. Pedersen and Camargo looking really weak here. I might want to switch these two. No, we'll leave it be. We'll leave it be. The pace is really hot, so for the moment, we shouldn't see too many attacks. The pack is back on level terms with the breakaway group. We're seeing some yo-yoing going on at the front. And apparently, a certain race leader, assuming that that's a sprinter, considering we're uh, three stages into this, well, four stages in, counting this one. All right. Set yourself to a 95 there, Pedersen, as you are absolutely a puncher. This climb is feared by many riders. The percentages are very high. Those guys up front aren't going to be making too many friends today. And a little acceleration here. The has Just a little one. Okay, hey, now hang on. Camargo losing the wheel a little bit. I lost the wheel a little bit. Camargo's done. And Pedersen is done. And we'll climb at an 85. See that we uh, recover our position a little bit. We're down to 54 in the peloton. And boy, oh boy, that looks like a good 25, 30 riders in front of me, doesn't it? at the moment we see a split and it was more than 25 riders because well there's 22 there's 23 and we are in a group of eight chasing so and I passed quite a few riders there approaching the top we were a good 40 riders down getting split off now Camargo running out of energy that's an obvious reason for that but just the pace not being at the front it's so easy on a skinny road to get caught behind so so easy 24k i'm right at the back of this so it's going to be easy to get water here let's do that now with the climb to come uh, and we're back in contact with the 30 so that's good i want to improve my position though in the group here we're not going to get any recovery I don't want to work hard either, but just ease my way forward a little bit. There we go. Okay, back up to a decent position. Now kind of sit on as best we can. The heart rate come down a little bit. And gel up. Not looking so good at this point, but I would imagine a whole lot of riders around me are in that same boat. In fact, let's take a look at what is Koish Genomator. That's one to watch out for. 
yeah, he's he is down to the end. Ethan Hader, very strong puncher. He looks really good. Ben Sevenint, always one to watch out for. He is almost done. Alaphilippe looks good, though. Lutsenko looks good. Plenty of riders around that do not look very good, though. So we're... We're in a mixed bag. But I definitely don't think we are uh, at the the upper end. There, there's some guys that have some endless amounts it's of energy. That the strongest can create some gaps. All right, up the effort, four and a half K. You know what, let's not up all the way to an 85 because I just don't think I have that kind of energy. 81, we'll give an 81 and climb at that pace. Let's see how well that holds up, 3.6. Go 79 here. Down to 20 riders. There's definitely guys going backwards. We saw that there was plenty that were losing it. Watch out. A team leader is falling behind. But there's some stronger guys that we're, we're just not going to compete with. In terms of the, the energy. The lack of team support for one thing. There's five guys that have gone clear. I'm in the group of nine chasing. And we might regain contact. Yet we do, at least momentarily. Eight chasing four now and I am now out of energy but I'm still a strong enough climber that I'm probably gonna be okay five chasing five oh dang just losing it there just losing it ten kilometers to the finish line seven guys ahead of us and it's the ones that looked good obviously that stayed on. We just couldn't quite climb as hard or as fast as we would want to. We get some recovery now for the final climb to come. Nearly losing the wheel there. We're into the last five kilometers. Regaining it. 41 seconds back of those guys and it's only like 900 meters that final climb meaning it's just attack. Oh, and now three more riders coming back at me. This climb features some dreadful percentages. Okay, back into a top ten. A great victory! Mikhail Landa he takes the win ahead of Pitcock. Vingegaard, Kustanov. The tail are still that, was, that was the amount of energy. We just didn't quite match up to it, but we still get ninth on the stage. Ahead of Matthew Vanderpoel, who should be, you know, right at the top on a stage like this. Uh, we easily beat Lopez, Hayter. There are strong riders behind us. There's definitely strong riders ahead of us as well. And we begin the final sequence of climbs, but it's the first of two laps that we're going to be running on this one, and I've already pushed forward to the final stage. It's stage seven of seven, and following the last two minor punchy stages that were definitely not, uh, not proper punchy stages. I mean, they were sprint ones that you're barely, barely going to see any split off. You're going to see a hundred riders near the finish and a few guys, you know, competing it out and maybe small small gaps but anyway we find ourselves in seventh in the overall so we're in a good place there but at a minute and a half down we're definitely not competing with the top punchers those guys who got away on that first stage your your alpha leap types there's far too many of the best punchers here and we're just a bit off of where they are but what we're about to enter is the finishing climb so we're going to get a good look at it right here. 14k to the top. So it's actually no no no, that's the la that's the next classified climb. This one's not classified cuz it's the start finish line and they didn't add it in for the other time you get it. We started right here at the top of this and we finish at the top. All right. So 
the peloton's already split quite a bit. We're down to 132 riders. Unfortunately, out of the handful that are out the back, three of them are, are, are my teammates. I mean, there, there's probably a good 10, 15 riders out the back, and we've got a high percentage of that. A quite high percentage and it as we get a little closer in here and the group continues to thin out further as we're down to 119 I'm down to three riders here and Pedersen and Alves are essentially done uh, Camargo I don't need you working at the front why don't you go ahead and offer protection uh, Alves why don't you get up here and you know give me whatever you've got left as we approach that final sequence of climbs for the final time Minute 15 to the breakaway of three, meaning they've got no chance. That gap's getting smaller and smaller each kilometer as we pull them back. They're already in sight, so the winner is definitely coming from the group. I'm looking good, even though I only have a plus one. But the tempo, the, the tempo was something that caught me out on that other stage. The, the punchers have an advantage when the tempo is really high, when the tempo isn't quite as bad that's where I excel but that hasn't really been the case but we're down to 42 in the peloton and I'm down to literally no teammates as we've gone over the top there but I'm looking really good now with two proper climbs left to go plus that little uh, V cut in the climb that we're on right now Let's slow things down at least rate. a little bit some here and the up the effort so we don't slip back percentages. as we're seeing an attack non spaders that's not something i'm along. worried about at this stage this is what i'm liking though following lopez We've over the top comfortably the one rider still away that is from the breakaway it's the last rider left from there we're down to 52 and we climb again. Pace has definitely lifted, allowing riders to get back in as teams are kind of lacking that uh, that support at the moment. There are just 10 kilometers left. All right, that's setting us up for the final climb. We have 10k to go. I'm gonna want to gel up here fairly soon. And this is where that puncher's thing is gonna really come in, but. Unlike on previous ones, I have max energy, so uh, I want to go 85 right from the beginning here and push as hard as I can for as long as I can. Stay near the front. Four and a half K to go. Oh, I got blocked off hard right there. That lost a lot of tempo. Lopez, Vanderpool, Pidcock are going, but right now I'm holding a nice frontal position with three and a half K to go. Now I'm slowly slipping back, but I'm conserving energy, waiting for that final sprint. Toins still has not been brought back, but that's happening now. Two and a half K, and you can see as they set up, I'm returning towards the front. Alaphilippe attacking now, two K to go. And I'm loving the position that I'm in, and I'm ready to make my attack at 1.8. Along with Unrian, well, Vanderpool, Vingegaard. Inside 1K to go, and we are over the top of the climb. Hopefully able to maintain a bit of pace here. And get a good finish. Vanderpool has broken away to take the win. Can I get third? I think it's fourth. It is fourth. Lutseko, Vingegaard, fourth place. But will we have any time separation at all? Yeah, I'm not so sure. It looks like we've got a top 18, 19, 26. There's gaps now. Will they give us anything other than the Vanderpool gap? I don't know. Probably not. So close to a four second time bonus, not that it would have mattered in the overall standings. Really good result on that one. Really well timed on, on my sprint uh, because we got up over the top and then it eases off uh, in that inside that final kilometer and we had already established the gap and we were never going to out sprint anybody over the top. So doing what we could on the climb itself gave us, you know, a front finish instead of a back finish in the group. And as I suspected, Vanderpool gets his gap, 14 seconds, and then no gap until you get behind the 26 chasers. So Avenipol comes in 28th, 52 seconds down. Yeah, Avenipol losing time. That's that's good. Skilmos losing time. We did good. We did good, all things considered. Keeps seventh place though, no change there. Vingegaard has won the race overall ahead of Landa. 
Kustinov, Sosa, Alphalete, Sivakov, myself, Vanderpool six seconds back, Conrad, and Dumoulin round out the top 10. Pigcock, Paulus, Lopez all missing out. It's really strong riders missing out in the top 10 positions overall. I would I definitely take that as there were zero mountain stages here. It was all punchy stages and we managed to get a solid top 10 finish. If not for Kustinov, Kustinov we would have had the under 25s, but I'll take second place in that classification. As a team, we were only 12th and most of that comes off of my shoulders. Here's how things look so far on the season. I lead the continental rankings. Yeah, uh, sorry, world tour rankings by a small margin. Continental, nothing, but super prestige, I am number one. So despite everything, I am having a fairly good season. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.